We are back on the golf cart project. In this video, we're going to take out the lead acid batteries from this compartment and we'll put in lithiums. So here we go. I'm David and welcome to my channel where I work on DIY projects for renewable energy and energy efficiency. In this video, we're going to take this very old golf cart. Now this thing has some flooded lead acid batteries. When I hauled it home, those cells were dry. I had added four and a half gallons of water, put a charge on it, and surprisingly enough, it actually went up and down the driveway. All right, I'm going to try to floor it. <laughs> we're floored. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping we get a little bit faster with the lithium batteries. We have full access to these batteries without hitting my head or anything like that. Now this is a really old design it looks like. These are contactors, and they go down to these resistors, those coils, they're resistors. Back there is the motor. So depending on where you press the pedal, you're either going to engage or disengage more or less contactors and more or less resistors. The more resistors you have, the slower you go. So when you press the pedal all the way down, you're skipping all the resistors and just sending the electricity straight to the motor and that's your fastest speed kind of interesting to me here we have the main negative of everything this wire is leading over to the contactor the first contactor then over on the other side we're gonna have the main positive this post and it leads right over here to this mechanism now this is connected to a lever and this is reverse and forward and that post needs to make contact one way or the other so I think what this is doing is uh, reversing the polarity which goes to the motor because I think in a DC motor if you reverse the polarity you either go one direction or the other direction these wires are just interconnecting putting them all in series so we have three cells so this is six volt six volt that's 12 and they just add together. Look how much they're bulging. <laughs> so that's 12, 24, and 36. It's a 36 volt cart. I labeled the couple of things that are not the series connections. I'm ready to go recycle these lead acid batteries. They're the batteries I just unloaded. We're gonna weigh them, find out how much they weigh. And that's that's what you have have now, so it's like almost 400 Four, pounds. <laughs> almost 400. All right, well I made $47 for doing that trip. That covers the gas to bring them over here. There's a big structural member right here, a big I-beam coming down. So I can't cut that. So I'm gonna create a flat floor using this piece of plywood. And I think I cut it to the right shape. Let's see if I can angle it in here. Here, and let's pull that out and take a look at where we hit. Now this one I hit on the side, which is what I want. This one I hit dead center but I don't want to hit it right in the center because then my screw won't go through. So I need to move it one way or the other. All right, so I moved that one to the side and it now hits where I want it. 
I countersunk these, and this is the screw that I'll be using. These are some leftover screws from when I put some pressure treated decking down on my trailer. One battery fits in well. I have a second one, but there's not enough height clearance to put the second one stacked right on top. So I'll have to find a location for the second one somewhere else in the golf cart. But let me drive around with this one for now just to test it. Uh, between the fiberglass and the battery. And some distance over here as well. Uh, but I need a big circuit breaker to handle the surge that that motor is going to pull. And I don't know how many amps it's going to pull right off the bat. Since I don't know exactly what I need just yet, I mean, I have this one, but I think this is, yeah, this is 30 amps. So this definitely won't be enough. Uh, so what else have I got kicking around that I might be able to use? Over here was my first DC load center, and I'm still using this circuit breaker for the Victron charge controller. Uh, but this other circuit breaker, this is a 250 amp, I'm not using that one anymore. Uh, since I added this ABB breaker for my big battery bank. So this one is a spare right now, so I think I'm going to pull this out. I want the big circuit breaker as my disconnect, so that's why I'll mount it over here so it can go out the front. In addition to the big circuit breaker, I'm also going to mount a big fuse in here. Fuse came out of an electric city bus that was powered with lithium iron phosphate cells. This was sent to me by Frank Z, and he sells them. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below if you want to check out some of Frank Z's videos. So I'll mount that right there. I think it's a perfect spot for it. So I can go from the positive post to the fuse, from the fuse to the circuit breaker, and then I'll be able to power the rest of the stuff. There we go. So that's the spot. We'll throw on the flat washers. Fuse, plenty of space. That looks good. Alright, so now we'll need to make a jumper wire from here to here, and another one to go over. Here's the main positive wire, and I cleaned up the copper terminal a little bit. hydraulic crimping tool that I use. This is a 50. It's not quite fitting on there. It's very close. So I'll grab it with my vice grips right like this. And now I can drill on that without it spinning around. So I'm going to drill it with the step bit. But I'm going to go do it over the track. And now it fits. And it looks like I made it a little bit longer than it needed to be. Yeah. I mean, it's flexible enough I can make that work. The goal right now is to test the setup. I want to see if these contactors can handle this. If they begin arcing on me, then I will throw the circuit breaker off. Uh, if they can handle it, great. 
and the wheels will spin and life will be good. <laughs> but if they begin arcing and catch on fire, then I'll turn the circuit breaker off and have the fire extinguisher on hand. All right, so let's see what happens. Got my gloves, got a fire extinguisher. I'm gonna put this just off over here. I gotta turn the circuit breaker on. Here we go. All right, main circuit breaker is on. I'll turn the key on. That will simply allow for the electricity to go to the contactor. Started spinning. <laughs> All right, so nothing burned up. Let's try this again. Here we go. So I'm gonna press this pedal right here. And as I press it, you hear the motor turn. So that's, this contactor is closing. As I press this pedal farther, more and more of these contactors are closing or opening. Alright, so it seems to be working okay. Great. Now what I'd like to do is somehow test to see if this wire is the reverse wire. Now this, this wire was on the 24 volt mark, which is why I listed it as 24 volt. It was part way through the batteries. And I think they did that so reverse will go slower. So I was trying it on the negative post and it wasn't doing anything. What it turns out, this particular wire needs to go on a positive side. And so I did get a little arc right there. So I did get a little arc, but if I held it there with the foot down on the pedal, those wheels turned in reverse. So that's what I need to do. I need to take this wire and put it on the positive side. And I jumped it over onto the positive post. So I brought it up there from the bottom. So it's just getting full pack voltage. This is reverse. This is forward. You can see a reverse and forward. So I have this meter and I'm trying to measure the inrush current of the motor. So the instructions actually say to use the alternating current, which I'm not sure if that makes a whole lot of sense, but that's what the instructions say. And then you press this until it says inrush. So there it says inrush on the bottom. And now if I, right now we're in forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my foot on the gas and we're gonna see the inrush. So 69.3, and the wheels were turning when we do that, so here. I'm gonna turn off the circuit breaker and turn off this key. I wanted to have a disconnect, so if something goes wrong, I can throw that off. We're all done under here, at least for now. I'm gonna go ahead and put that seat back on here and we'll drive it outside and see what it does. Behind me is a little bit of an incline going up the lawn. With the lead acid batteries, we couldn't quite make it up to the very top. Let's try it with lithium. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it can definitely do the hills better than before. I don't think it has a higher top end speed. I think it still maxes out about 11 miles per hour, which was the same with the lead acid. But we're having no trouble at all on these hills, and with the lead acid, we definitely did. Go for a little go. 
golf cart ride. Here we go. We're going backwards. Win. Hi, mommy. Nice. Hi. This golf cart is definitely a lot more fun to drive, and I'm glad I did the conversion from lead acid to lithium. This lithium battery came from batteryhookup.com. You can use my coupon code, David Paws, for 10% off any of your purchases from them, and that helps me out with the affiliate program. If you enjoy the videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Thanks for checking it out. But check it out, it's still at 38 volts. And that's because it's really large. It's almost a six kilowatt hour pack. Now, if this particular pack is not available anymore, you can always find some other substitute. But I'm really impressed with how well uh, the lithium is handling this. Now, in some upcoming videos, you're going to see me add a BMS to this battery because I cannot charge it until I add a BMS. A BMS is really important for safety when charging lithium batteries. I am not yet done modifying this golf cart. I still have to add a BMS to that battery before I'll be able to charge it. And to charge this battery, I can't use the original lead acid charger, so I'm gonna be adding some solar panels to the roof with a charge controller. Now, I'm gonna be using four solar panels in series to get the voltage higher than the battery voltage and I'll be leaving a link in the description below to these solar panels. These are monocrystalline, so that you can uh, check out the specs for yourself, but that will be in some future videos, and I'm really excited about making this a solar-powered golf cart. Thanks a lot for watching.